David, it's great to see you. Thanks for giving us a few minutes right now. Before we get into the Phillies, i got to mention this. Courtesy of my friend J.P. Morosi, your son Landon just got hired as a pro scout with the Mariners. How cool is that? Yeah, very excited for him. Uh, he's been working hard to try to get into baseball. He's 23 years old, went to Wake Forest, and has interned a couple times and put together a nice background of, been, of playing and the analytical aspect of it. So we're thrilled for him and very proud of him uh, achieving that. That's very cool. Anything happens, you go tell Jerry DePoto. I can keep this kid in line. I can talk to Lana. We'll be good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's get into the baseball. Again, phenomenal year again for the Phillies, Dave. The way you guys are able to – match expectations and exceed them. You're coming off a World Series appearance. Even though you didn't get there, you still had a big upset of the Braves, a very successful season. Let's start with Bryce Harper, because when, when Harold Reynolds said to me, I bet you this is going to be a long-standing move, I said, well, I think it's just temporary. They're trying to get Bryce back in there, but clearly Harold was right. He knew something I didn't. Bryce Harper going to be the first baseman for the Phillies moving forward. What went into that decision? Well, I think a few things. Uh, we sat down and visited with Bryce, and he was open to doing whatever he felt and we felt would be best for the Phillies organization. He was happy to comply with that. But when we talked about it internally, we just felt that he was he did such a good job at us for us at first base from a defensive perspective. He's very athletic. He works hard. We think as he ages and over the next few years, he'll have found a permanent home there. Really makes us a better defensive club when you put Harper at first base with those glove gold glove capabilities start at second Turner at short Bowman at, at third and Riamoto behind the plate and then allows us to be a little more athletic in the outfield with guys like Marsh and Rojas out there and then it allows us to play Schwarber at DH so we think it just makes sense for us he's open to it very hard working and you know that when he puts his mind to something he's going to go to excel at doing it and uh, that's the idea he's going to going to take towards playing first base. Dave, Jake Peavy here, buddy. Congrats on the, the last few years and the runs you've made. I've been a part of teams that have played deep into World Series runs. You see the way I believe you guys started last year a little bit slower because you're riding your guys so hard. Wheeler, Nola, et cetera, is asked to do so much into November, even your bullpen the same way. Do you think about that going back to back years, just taxing in the, the bullpen, so to speak, and, and the starters riding them so hard into the playoffs uh, it, it, as far as your mindset, building the team this year and then your spring training and, and early season approach next year? Well, I think you do. It's a good point, Jake. Like you said, you've been part of it. But I also think that if you're careful with the guys, you don't overwork them. They are in a position where they still have the November, December, January build up in February. Of course, they're starting to throw in January. I was part of that process a couple times in Detroit. We were four years in a row in the postseason with the big horses that we had, and then in Boston three years in a row. So it was a situation I think that you can handle it. I think you have to be careful. You don't push your pitchers too much early, especially in the beginning of spring training, but you also have to get them ready to start the season. So there's that that fine balance with the combination of working with them, with your pitching people, your medical people, and we'll be prepared to do that. So I think you have to be aware, but I think there's also ways to accomplish that. Phillies bullpen threw 587 and two-thirds innings, so middle of the pack to that point. Don't want to overexert them, but do still want to use them where possible. Aaron Nola, Dave, you guys extended a qualifying offer. How are things looking there as far as trying to bring him back into the fold? Well, we love Aaron. He's been great for us. He's just tremendous, not only on the mound, but in the community. He's been a Philly since day one. So we're very, would love to have him back. We need a starting pitcher. If we don't sign Aaron, we're going to have to be open to try to acquire somebody else. If we bring him back, our rotation is set. But we'll see. We were, we were not able to get him signed last year in spring training, which was unfortunate for us, but we understood his scenario. Now he's in a spot where he has the ability to talk to 29 other clubs, so it doesn't get any easier. But I do think there's at least mutual interest in both parties in trying to get something done. And hopefully for us, we can get it done because we absolutely love, uh, love Aaron and what he does for the organization, not only as a person, uh, but on the field. We, we know starting pitching and adding one more is going to be there. You've been so close to punching the ticket. You know what it takes and have done it other places. What is the, the one aspect? Uh, I heard you talk about your defense being much more athletic and, 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 and from where you were in the, the last year or so. What is the move, Dave, or, or what's the, the priority um, within house to say punching the ticket and being the World Series champions next year? Well, I think a combination of factors. One is that 
we do need to find that starting pitcher. We have Wheeler, we have Suarez, we have Walker, and we have the young kid Sanchez, which we really like. So getting that extra pitcher. The other thing, if you ask me, uh, is playing well at the right time and being healthy. I think we have the type of lineup that can put up runs. We play well defensively. We're in a position where we have a, a lot of good offensive players on our team. We've got young players progressing like Stott and Marsh and Bohm along with uh, Rojas in center field. So I think we have a nice balance. But being healthy and playing well at the right time, if you have these guys playing, I think we have a chance to, to go back to the postseason and see what happens. Now, without question, back-to-back -back postseason appearances for the Phillies. First time since five straight from 07 to 11. So clearly, you guys are building something special there. Dave, a thought on Reese Hoskins. No qualifying offer there with Harper going to first base. Not sure how Reese's outlook is going to look, but how about the impact he's had there in Philadelphia? Well, Reese Hoskins uh, is just a tremendous individual. I mean, his the record on the field speaks for itself with the way he swings the bat and hits the ball with power. But he's a leader in the clubhouse, outstanding individual. He and his wife, Jamie, they're so involved in the community in Philadelphia. You don't make any more solid people than these individuals. So if he doesn't come back to Philly, um, it's one in which we'll miss him, but can be only thankful for what he has done for our community and the organization. Dave, talk about the atmosphere in Philadelphia. You've been in some great baseball places. You mentioned Detroit. You mentioned the Boston winning at both places. Philadelphia, electric atmosphere. We seemingly a great place to play at home. Is that part of your pitch to these free agencies, uh, free agents that you're trying to, to win over? No doubt about it. I mean, I think uh, being in those places and being in some markets that are just tremendous baseball places, when you talk about Detroit, Boston, I've been in other spots and been around in the postseason and traveled around, I, I don't think I've ever seen the atmosphere we've had there in Philadelphia. I think it's one that, with the fan support, with the community support, but when you get in that ballpark, it's just electric. The players love it. You can see how they respond to it. There's a real bond between our club. Our players have embraced the, the Philly tough atmosphere that we have. So it's a great place to play. And I th I've sat up there during the postseason. I was sitting with some people with my family and some friends, and I said, this is what it's all about. This is the type of atmosphere you try to create because it's just electric, and you can tell everybody's having fun at the ballpark. So um, we've been able to create that, the fan base that we have. So um, it really is part of the pitch that we have, and it also comes up with so many people we talk that they basically say, geez, what you have there, look how special that is, and uh, I do think it's an advantage for us. Yeah, and just one more thought, Dave, just, again, as a greater extension of the crowds, just the city itself, again, having been so well-traveled, can you put into perspective how passionate Philadelphia sports fans are? <laughs> well, they are passionate. That's a great word. <laughs> I, it's one of those, so I think you have to be aware because you're in a position where, and there's maybe a couple other markets where, um, that type of passion exists, but I don't think there's any that's more than Philadelphia. And, and I remember a long time ago I was taught, it's the only place I, I have seen people, our fans at times, that they'll give a quick boo to a player that's a good player. <laughs> but they're not booing the player. Yeah. They're booing the performance at that particular time. And I remember way back when Bill Veck, when I broke in with the White Sox, used to say, mm. just remember those that boo quickly also cheer quickly and the loudest. So uh, yeah. it, it, it's second to none. That's Sage Wisdom there. Vec as in Rec, all-time classic, and uh, certainly picked up Trey Turner this year as well documented with those cheers. Dave Dombrowski has done an outstanding job as the president of baseball operations of the Phillies, and even at this morning hour, not a single hair out of place in that perfect quaff. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <laughs> All right, thanks for having Dave. me. All right, good stuff there from Dave Dombrowski. Thank it's you. Amazing to think about what they built there at Phillies, certainly a lot of success.